Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at Ghost BSD. This is of course a BSD distribution rather than a Linux one and the version that I'm going to be looking at uh, is the development release 10.3 and this is the release candidate one, so the first release candidate. So this is not really a good example of the finished product but I've been having a look at it, I've run it through a virtual machine today and I think there are some things that uh, you might like to take a look at but don't treat this as like a proper or serious review just treat this as me uh, having a play around with this in a virtual machine for a few hours and then sort of introducing it to you as a possible thing to sort of keep an eye on because it's certainly an interesting distribution and I'm, I'm really liking where BSD is going these days. So uh, I'm just going to give you a run of the operating system but it's going to be a pretty standard first impressions review also, I would like to apologize. You can see that horrible artifacting around there on my, my mouse cursor for the last couple of videos. That's just a bug with VirtualBox. I've had a look and, and, and have been unable to fix it, but I suspect uh, that it will get fixed perhaps in the next uh, release of VirtualBox, or at least that's the hope. So, uh, it comes with a pretty standard XFCE desktop um, with a nice little sort of like a command line um, terminal box thing there so if you just wanted to type in the name of an application uh, you could so for example I think you could do Firefox and then it should pop up um, again of course because I'm running this in a virtual machine uh, don't take the performance aspect of this sort of first impressions video too seriously some things run faster and some things run slower so um, yeah for example you can just uh, type in Firefox and up comes the browser so that's quite nice if you're a keyboard orientated person of course this being the XFCE desktop environment it's super customizable in any way you can imagine it also comes with a pretty nice selection of desktop backgrounds. Now I know this is a really superficial thing, but I do actually quite like it when I just sort of start customizing a distribution um, and just seeing what the options are and what's come bundled with the distribution to see a, a really good sort of selection of very nice looking uh, desktop environments that I haven't seen on any other distribution. Oh, that is a beautiful photograph. Look at that. I'm going to keep that one. So it's little touches like this that, that really sort of warm me up to a, to a Linux distribution. Uh, it's little touches that, um, that just make it feel a bit more complete, that there's less that you have to do once it's installed, and all of that kind of stuff. It makes it feel a little bit more complete. So I've played around with the customization options quite a bit already. That's usually s sort of part of the, the testing that I do to see what themes come pre-installed, because if there is one thing that Linux and BSD distributions just have not got down is, is theming. It's it's complicated and most distributions don't come pre-installed with enough themes that you can sort of adequately customize your distribution without having to go into like the AUR or to go to a, a third party website which I don't think you should really do given the strengths that Linux and, and BSD have so it's it's a very superficial critique but it is one that I feel uh, separates Linux from perhaps sort of you know mass uh, adoption of course, you could always go down the, the GNOME route and really just limit customization and just have uh, maybe a light theme and a dark theme and just make sure that they're polished and uh, you know error-free and then just run with them and and sort of remove the customization options completely. It will um, you know uh, it will cause less breakages. It will keep things simpler. Um, but of course, you know part part of the fun of Linux is that we get to we get to play around with it and we get to hack it apart and put it back together again. So it's there's there's a degree of philosophy that comes into this as well. Of course, you can then just install uh, GNOME tweak tools and and get the best of both worlds. If GNOME wasn't so resource intensive, anyway, this is this is uh, getting a bit off track here. Standard XFCE desktop environment. It comes with uh, let's see, where's the Office suite? Yeah, it comes with LibreOffice. Um, it comes with uh, the, the GNOME M player, which is a nice lightweight player. As you can see here, this is OBS. Um, I've just installed this using the package manager, so I'm sort of running this for the first time. And it looks, yeah, that's pretty good. So OBS is the, is the software package that I look for uh, explicitly to see uh, what kind of software the repositories are holding. If it's got um, OBS, that means that it's it's generally sort of got its ear to the ground in, in what's being released and the software that, that people are uh, that people want. And if a distribution is particularly sort of trailing behind or struggling to have a large uh, software set of software repositories behind it, it will probably, OBS will be one of the things they, they omit or tends to be one of the things they omit. That's changing more and more as time goes by, but I usually just consider it a personal benchmark. So it comes as a pretty full-featured desktop. There are plenty of um, applications here. Uh, it's almost indistinguishable from just about any other distribution out of the box. Now, as you can see, I am actually running 
a dark theme. I'll just pull up uh, what have we got here? Um, files. Oh, that's that's um, so that's a GTK theme. So it uses the standard Adwata Adwaiter. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that GTK theme. Um, and I don't actually know why um, why the GNOME or the GNOME files is is actually there. Uh, Thunar, that's the one. So this is the native one for XFCE. And as you can see here, it's got a real nice dark theme. And I can go into the settings manager. I do like the XFCE settings manager. Um, we can look at appearance. Now, I've used XFCE dusk theme because I, I do like dark themes. I just find them a little bit easier on the eyes. But as you can see, that doesn't necessarily look too great on GTK themes. And as you saw with OBS just now, uh, QT themes. Now, in my personal opinion, they look fine. I mean, I don't use that many QT applications, and I'd rather they look. Uh, I'd rather they work than than looked perfect. But uh, um, but the XFC uh, uh, the XFCE desk theme probably is not compatible with the GNOME 3.20 upgrades. I could be wrong on that one. So Gnomix, ah, this was the default uh, theme that came with the distribution, and this one does look significantly more compatible with GTK th uh, 3 applications. If I just pull up OBS, we'll see if it's QT4 compatible. Or QT5. Ah, but it doesn't look so. No. Okay, so QT applications still look uh, not a part of that theme. Which uh, take it as a take it as a criticism. But depending on how important you put these things, uh, you consider these things. Uh, take it as it comes. Okay, so uh, let's talk about installing software. Octo package. This is very similar to Octopi. Um, Qt based package manager. Uh, you can type in Firefox and uh, have a look at that. So we've got Firefox or uh, for, Firefox 47 already installed. So it's um, so that's uh, that's sort of the the version you're looking at there. Um, does it have Chromium? Yes, it does. And we can look at the info. Google web browser based on WebKit. 41. So I won't download and install that now, but uh, but it is in the software repositories should you require it. Is Pepper Flash in there? Let's have a look. Um, it doesn't look like it is. I don't know if that's because of a compatibility with um, BSD or whether or not it's just that they don't really consider Flash to be that important to bundle with it or possibly even they may consider it a security risk because I know that a lot of people do consider Flash to be a security risk. So uh, so there are plenty of good reasons perhaps for not including it on your distribution. But um, actually, let's just have a look at Firefox and have a look and see if, uh, see if it comes Flash supported. Um, I think the only website I can think of that r runs Flash these days is um, is Twitch, and even they're moving over to HTML5 soon. I think it's the front page. I think it explicitly uses Flash. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it does come Flash supported, just not with Pepper Flash. It seems. Maybe if I looked a little deeper, I could try and find it. But that's really about all there is to show. I mean, it's a standard XFCE desktop um, on top of a BSD distribution that, uh, at least running in a virtual machine, I haven't had any problems uh, whatsoever, actually. The installation process was very easy. Um, it, I think it could use a little um, boost in the eye candy department. It does look a little bit dated, but uh, that's something that's easily rectifiable uh, if you're willing to actually install a theme. Uh, and I wouldn't say that, you know, it, you know, if I say that Linux isn't really uh, ready for mainstream adaptation, or at least the free and open source um, distributions, um, then then I, uh, you know, I think BSD might might be a step behind that. But it's promising. It's very promising. And it's nice that there is an alternative to Linux, that Linux doesn't completely run the show. Now, of course, most people will say that Linux is is um, is, is better on the desktop than BSD-based distributions, and that BSD-based distributions tend to have a better time, uh, you know, running servers and so forth. Uh, I don't necessarily take that completely as read, but um, I can see that that's where they specialize. 
this is definitely something that I could use. I could deploy this and um, providing that, um, you know, depending on the, the use case of the machine, this is a fine distribution just to deploy and, 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 and set. Um, for the first RC candidate playing around for two to three hours, probably closer to four at this point, um, and I've not come across a single bug, there have been a few things that are a little rough around the edges, a little things that are clearly tailored for more advanced users than um, intermediate or beginners, but uh, in essence, this is this is something that I can I can really get behind, and I think that they're doing a lot of great work here, uh, and I think that sort of any criticisms that I can really level at this, um, running it in the use case that I currently am in a virtual machine, they're superficial really. Um, I mean, there could be more packages in the repository, but then again, that's um, if you're using it for pretty straightforward use cases, for example, if you only need a machine to to run LibreOffice or to check email or to run a printer. This does the job just as well as any Linux distribution. So, you know, and I like XFCE desktop. It's lightweight, but customizable and easy to use it. To me, it hits all those balances. It also, because it doesn't have new releases that often, it's also tends to be um, quite stable, I find. Now, I know there are a lot of people that disagree with me on that one. Um, and I think that whenever you, whenever I say that something is stable, sort of all the people that have had a problem with it do come forward at that point. So um, I can only sort of, again, claim from my personal experience. Um, but also because the desktop environment seems to get a new release maybe about once a year, um, that means that once you sort of fix a problem or find a workaround or manage to patch something with a script or whatever, that can be a year before that problem either needs to be readdressed or is fixed. So I think there is a lot to be said. I think that XFCE is a particularly good choice for rolling releases uh, when you just want a, a, you know, a degree of stability where you can find it. But then customizable and uh, and it can look good. A lot of people do say that XFCE looks a little dated, but you find a good theme, uh, you get some good compositing effects. Hell, you don't even need to use the compositing effects that come with XFCE. You could you could put in Compiz or heaven forbid you could probably get Kwin to work, but um, <laughs> but but that seems uh, that that doesn't really exactly seem like it clicks too nicely. But anyway, I do recommend giving GhostBSD a go. The uh, first release candidate um, is out and. And, and uh, I can't speak for its um, uh, hardware support, so I will I will put that as a caveat. As I understand it, uh, Linux is supported, um, the Linux kernel is supported on many more devices than the BSD kernel, but if the BSD kernel works and runs well, um, and all of this comes along in tow, you've got a really promising and cracking distribution here that's an alternative to Linux, and I think that that's worth uh, celebrating. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, give it a try. Give me your thoughts down in the comments section below. Um, I'm, gonna be, I'm probably going to be playing around with it a little more in the uh, in the old virtual machine um, because it's just a little bit uh, outside. You know, it's a li it's a little bit outside of my sort of Linux comfort zone. Um, but it is nice to see that um, it's a project that seems to be doing really quite well, and it certainly looks very nice. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.